is the majority report and its orbiters just money grubs? Have they been co-opted by capitalist interests, capital interests? Are they lazy? I think they are money grubs, but wanted to get your point of view. Thank you for the real stuff. Lazy is what, one big part of it. Uh, this is a career for them to have no skin in the game. We talk about that mm-hmm. all the time. But lazy is another big part of it. They just go with whatever. Uh, like Once again, we do propaganda report where we show MSNBC segment. We show you guys what NPR is saying. And then we will see a majority report segment. They're do- saying the exact same that thing. thing. They lazy. They just say they mm-hmm. want to. They put their finger up wherever the wind gonna, wherever the liberal wind go, and that's what they're gonna repeat. And their their takes are always so predictable because mm-hmm. of that. And then whenever they think outside the box, you get it, in, incredible gems like uh, Emma Viglin praising Andrew Cuomo during the time where we knew. He was killing seniors in nursing homes. And he also had an amazing quote from Emma Viglin when she said, I know you guys don't like Joe Biden, but if you care about climate alone, Joe Biden, you should vote for him just for that alone. Yeah. I know you got that screenshot. I that wonder what she's critical. saying about Willow Project now. Along yeah, you with got the, the Willow Project movement. going on now. So that's the critical analysis that you get from people who like Majority Report. So take you, your, your conclusion can be like why they're doing it, whatever, but they're not serious actors. And we show you guys that we do Sam Cedar segments, and we have a hard time getting through them without laughing. Like the crowd, this, this, uh, the comment section, you guys be laughing because to us, it's so obvious. But there are people that think that people are legitimate, where they just lazy liberal talking point pushers. That's all they are. But that's we're we're talking, and this is uh, I think this is what we coined the Bernie Sanders industrial complex. What we've been talking about is. The Bernie Sanders Industrial Complex has gone really from like cutting edge heroes in 2015 and 16, and they just made a living off of that. So now, you know, in 2020, it was like, oh, this is just going to be a thing where we're just running candidates and making money and Mm -hmm. getting larger. No, 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 no. That was just two times. Like, we're not going to continue and they think that this is just the thing yeah. we're going to continue to do and it seems like the Bernie Sanders industrial complex they're no longer here to actually solve problems anymore they're just kind of like let's no. let's you know let's move you know let's move the uh, play piece one step here and then move it here and then next election we'll move another play piece here and that's really what they're trying to do they they've they've like what we how we call them they've industrialized the process of trying to run a candidate and build a movement without trying to actually accomplish it will anything. blow your guys' mind when you realize how much money these people made on this campaign. Like how much? Oh, I'm sure. I believe it. I how, believe how, it. how much? Like people like Kyle Kalinsky, my figure out these people are millionaires, guys. Yeah, pushing yeah. this, and they they will do a segment that is brilliantly crafted about how politicians and neoliberals and conservatives they have economic interests that will corrupt their. <laughs> Decision making. Meanwhile, they're one hundred percent immune. Trust me, bro. Trust us. We will never be influenced by the amount of money we was made pushing this fraud of the progressive left of the Bernie Sanders movement. They're the statement I'm gonna do either today or tomorrow. When you have Manuel Macron, a neoliberal scum, who's like, maybe the United States, maybe the Europe should resist the United States, and maybe we should seek peace in Ukraine. Lula, we should seek peace in Ukraine. Meanwhile, these cowards can't even say that. Refuse right. to even say the bare minimum. Critique what do you on think? War. What do you think it really is? And I'll 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 pass it to our brothers here, uh, Keaton and Russell. What do you think it really is like? Do you think if AOC or whoever, and I'm using AOC because that's the name that's most popular, but you can insert anybody all the way down to Pramila Jayapal. Like, if they really came out and was like, "No, this war is wrong. The war started in 2000." If they really got in front of a camera and did that. What would actually happen? Like, do we think? What? What? What do you think they think? What is the fear of what's actually happening or going to happen if they did that? Um, it's all of a piece because the Democratic Party base is made up of cowbell men and bullhorn boy, <laughs> because that's the base of the party. That's who you're getting on the wrong side of when you make that statement. So I think once you're making that congressional salary and you're getting those congressional benefits and you've also been probably pulled off into a couple of back rooms and given a good talking to, 
about what they're going to do to you. And look, I'm not going to get, con I make a lot of jokes about, you know, they show you pictures of your family and where, and the addresses, but in all reality, Hey, listen, you not only are going to get driven out of Congress because we're going to fund primaries against you. Even if you somehow manage to survive that, we're going to make sure that your life is a living hell. You never are able to get on any committees, get any legislation passed. And if you do get out of Congress, we're going to make sure that you're never able to get any of those sweet revolving door gigs that friends of ours are able to get. It's like you're dealing with the mob. And I think most of them, very few people are able to function seeing themselves as the villain. So they convince themselves yeah. that they're doing the best that they can within the system as it is. Yeah. And over time, they just completely get co-opted by the thing they went there to fight against. At this point, every time I see AOC talk, I, I, hear, I hear Emperor Palpatine in my head. Your journey to the dark side is complete. <laughs> you know, she's to she's totally one of them now. There's there's nothing left of the AOC that I I At campaigned all. for back in the day. There's Wait till you guys see the Scarola interview. It literally dropped this morning. I didn't finish it. I got like halfway through. And there's a there's a part the spot. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a minor spoiler where David Scarola asked her about her voting. Uh, and asked her about how she voted with Biden nine percent of the time. How what their strategy about defeating big big money and progressive uh, dark money was, even though they keep losing. Like he asked them, she asked them these questions about the, the strategy, right? And you want to know her response was? She like, man, we trying, but if only you guys fought harder for us. What? <laughs> that was her answer. Wait till we do a breakdown. Her answer essentially was. Hey, I know I'm doing all these fucked up things. I know the Democrats are going to shift too far to the right. I know we keep losing, but it's so much mostly your fault, not mine. If only you guys organized more. If only you guys yeah. send us more yeah. money. If only you guys yeah. got on top of your game. Not my fault. It's only it's, your, it's on you guys. Vote it's hard. a joke of an interview. So, man, I can't wait to break. It's literally a, a joke. She blames the outside game for why she voted for Ukraine. <laughs> Well, I, see, I mean, look, well, I that's see, that's well, a piss poor excuse, obviously. But the kernel of truth there is that the outside game also does suck, right? Like the outside I game. I, I will actually disagree with that. There's a there's the establishment outside game. Those are the well. That's what I'm are... talking about when yeah, you talk yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, Shama. Right. I'm talking about right. 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 I'm talking about the Young Turks. Like that game, they're not going to do anything. They 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 are they are a paper tiger. So what, uh, I mean, what? Oh yeah, you guys have to organize harder. <laughs> what is What does it even mean? I don't even, I don't even understand what it means. Like they're there. What, you want a hundred more progressives in the house? You, 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 you basically sell admission to the progressive caucus. What is it, $400? You have to pay a $400 fee to join? That's why fucking Hakeem Jeffries joined. Hakeem <laughs> Jeffries bought his way into both caucuses, the third way and the CPC. So he could have it both ways. Like, what does it even mean? It, it doesn't. It it's a meaningless thing to say. Well, you guys have to get stronger, and ultimately, what this all is in service of is just a certain stasis and a certain laziness that sets in. I mean, this is an imperial decline, and I think what happens at the end of Empire is that the Empire just gets lazy. They don't see a reason to keep doing it anymore. At a certain point, they have no reason to exist anymore. And just like when any organism has no reason to exist anymore, it starts to die, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that's just the lifespan of a thing, whether it's a bug, a person, or a country. And so I think that's the, the phase we're in. And because progress inside the system has become just impossible, once you get there, even if you run as this renegade outsider that AOC did and, you know, knock down the house and all that stuff, <laughs> once you get there, you realize there's not much I can do. And so if I vote against the Ukraine war, then MSNBC yells at me. If I vote for it, they treat me nice. What's easier? The latter. So that's what I do. You know, I think so much of this is just a collective laziness that has set in, a collective resignation that has set in. And then you have, like Nick, you were saying, the actual outside game. Yeah, for and sure. And they are mobilized and they are energized, but there aren't many of them, unfortunately. And part of the reason there aren't many of them is because a lot of that anti-establishment sort of fervor has been funneled in to right. the Democratic Party 
largely thanks to, and, you know, I don't want to overinflate the importance of YouTube in general, but certainly outlets like TYT, Majority Report, do not help, right? Yeah, and that's and that's why, they, um, and you you are on point there, but that's why it's such an important point to make that there are two different outside games. The outside game that is good, legitimate, is small, because AOC right. and the establishment, they do their best to delegitimize and distance themselves from from mm -hmm. the real outside game. You have people mm -hmm. who say they mm -hmm. care about labor, nowhere to be found at Worker Strike Back. You have people that yep. care, claim to care about Medicare for All, nowhere to be found at the March for Medicare for All, including some kids from Kansas City who are on, who are on YouTube too. Who did? Who, <laughs> yeah. So you have you have all these people who, who have all these things to say, but when it comes to actually organizing with the outside game, they have no interest in doing it. And by doing so, they will say, "Oh, that's the red brown lines or right wingers at the March for Medicare for All." That's why we cannot legitimize the real real outside game. And I spoke to people at Worker Strike Back. Many of them reached out to AOC. And the establishment boutique left because they are not like us. They're not uh, going after these people. They'd rather them join them. And they didn't hear anything back. What does that say? They're not, they're a professional organization who's trying to get shit done. So they're not going to say that. That's why it's my job. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the complaint that they're not going to make. Why, why didn't Bernie and AOC show up at Worker Strike Back? They're, you know, they're trying to national, they're trying to help Amazon make a national union. They had legit union organizers that showed up right. there, but they was too. But apparently, that that event is too small for the likes of AOC. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are above showing up to such things, such things. But Key, I know you want to chime in. Feel free, brother. Go free. No, no, that's okay. I mean, I think this was the design flaw of the 2020 Bernie campaign, and why it peaked at 35 points is because the pool of people who they are enlisting to their cause is dominated by cowbell guy and the <laughs> yes. bullhorn guy. Like that's the, that's the pond you're fishing in. Uh, now in, in 2016, he did better because that pond was bigger because there was just this populist zeitgeist, not just here, but all around the world. Right. That's why Brexit happened. Right. And so there, there, there were more crossover voters, right. People who are maybe traditionally left, but they saw something in Trump that they liked. So they went and voted for him and the opposite happened. I knew a lot of Republicans who voted for Sanders in the 2016 race um and a lot of them went back to trump when it was over but that that 2016 primary represented a sort of reshuffling of the deck right where you could actually go outside of the traditional two-party demographic um by by 2020 the chips have already settled that's one of the reasons why there wasn't that populist magic behind bernie 2020 because in 2016 a lot of those really sort of rugged populist types who voted for Bernie, a lot of them defected to Trump in the general in 2016, and now they're Trump voters. So they were no longer available to Sanders then. Mm -hmm. And so what and, and you know, I'm, I'm making a sort of reference to the campaign. But at this point, like, why doesn't Bernie or AOC show up at the workers strike back event? Because they know where their bread is buttered now. Exactly. They know who their voters are now. And their voters are not at those events now. Their voters are the fog, the foghorn. Mm. <laughs> <Bullhorn>. <laughs> that's, 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 that's one of yeah. the reasons why we felt so strongly about posting that video. Because we really felt that those people represent a huge swath of people who there is this illusion amongst progressive media that we can reach. And as you can see very clearly in that video, that they, they cannot be reached. Yeah. And once again, there's... Uh, there was a uh, you had Sh uh, Shama that was booked on Nina Turner's show because I'm sure Nina Turner had a, a a leftist intern that was like, "Yo, I don't know if you guys heard Shama, she's on point." <laughs> it's like <laughs> so the young intern booked Shama Sawant, and there was everything was lined up, and then all of a sudden they canceled. Really, I hadn't heard about that. Once again, they are above saying uh, making complaints about such things, but when I hear these stories, when I'm talking to these people in Seattle. Um, that really makes that should that should raise maximum suspicion. They so they so maybe the producer they saw well Shama Swan, let's see who this is. They looked up, saw her criticism of AOC and the Democratic Party, and they was like, What the fuck are you doing inviting someone like this on the show? Probably reprimanded the intern. Well they, her, so why are they afraid of someone like Shama, who's way more polite than we are? Because in, I, in the yeah. end in the end, it's a big club. You know, on, on the one hand, Nina can challenge them up to a point 
but she already proved the last time she campaigned. There's that line she won't go over. Once you go over that line, there's no coming back. You're nadered. You're nadered. That was the that was what made the Bernie campaign in the end a monumental waste of time. Russ, are because you, are you saying that she's not embossed? Are you? Or is, is that? What you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> she, I'll she, share you. I will not allow you to slander a black woman. <laughs> See, she's still in a position where she can moderate yeah. and go to yeah. a place where they'll find her more acceptable. But when you burn them in a certain way, when you burn them the way I, I still don't understand why she did this. Uh, when you burn them the way Donna Brazil did, there's no coming back. They will never let Donna Brazil come to the prom again. She, the mean girls have kicked her out. She's never, I don't get it. Well, and Nina's sad. Nina's story is sad because I will make the argument that she's on that list. That's why it's sad that Nina still tried to crawl. She'll, because even though we don't like her, she's 100% on that list. The Democrats and the liberals can't stand her. You Even the, the Justice Democrats and the Progressive Caucus refuse to support her over Chantel Brown. Despite all my criticism, I, could, I will 100% admit Democrats hate her. Because of the Hillary Clinton thing, that's why that's the whole origin of Jonah's sure. Twitter. Yeah. Because she was yeah. supposed to speak at the DNC in 2016, and they yeah. they ghosted her, left Donuts at her office, and that birthed Donuts Twitter because liberals were mocking the fact that, uh, that Neil Turner didn't get the invite. So she's hated by the Democrats. That's why it's even more pathetic when she still she still grovels to them. She's still weak on the Democrats and the progressives who didn't endorse her. She's more upset at that. RBN, who she unfollowed and blocked, she more upset at Jimmy Dore than the progressives who betrayed her by refusing to support her over Chantel Brown. But sorry, Russell, I just she is not on Boston. That's that showed their weakness. That well, that, their weakness. Well, well, that's like um, that's like Elizabeth Warren, who you know stepped a little bit outside the box, just a little bit, and they didn't give her shit. They gave her nothing for it. So it, it if you're right for a figure like Nina Turner to try to kiss their asses. What do you think they're going to give you? Like, what do you think you're going to get out of it? But I think she feels like she's not completely out of bounds yet. You know, remember she was a politician in good standing yeah. in Ohio. She wasn't like known as this firebrand radical. That's one of the reasons they had to pull out all the stops to yeah. crush her campaign because she wasn't really thought of that way in Ohio is this radical politician. She remembered the good days of the establishment being nice to her. And then that was she still she still can't believe they're not accepting her because despite the, the meltdown that Nina people had at me after I was on Jamie and roasted her after a few of our segments, the establishment was way meaner than Nina Turner than we was. Like you sure. saw the attacks that she had. Uh -huh. They were more upset at us. Well, ask yourself why. But I want to show you guys this because I, I, I previewed this at the beginning of the show. So this is good. This get into a whole other conversation. This is the conversation I had with Ryan Grimm that I really hope he followed through on because I brought up their failed strategy, which I think needs a reckoning. And I think mm -hmm. RBN is that reckoning. Unlike the boutique Bernie Sanders industrial complex, uh, we are 100% post Bernie Sanders. We started right. after Super right. Tuesday. We didn't. Well, uh, go ahead, where, go ahead, where, where shows like ours, where, where, where the result. Yeah, in a lot of respects of all these shows like TNT, of Kyle, of Secular Talk. Yeah, they're they're making their money now. They're, they're on their money. It. They're they're on, look look. We've talked about this on the show too. These guys are some of the luckiest motherfuckers on earth. Now TYT <laughs> T, T, TYT they they, they they have some talent. Kyle, if Kyle's gotten his game today, he'd have three people watching him, and two right. of them would be his relatives. Definitely David Nobody Dole. would David watch that. Sure. David Dole, too. They all got in early enough, they and, they, and they rode those campaigns to a million subscribers uh, or so. And now, that now in my video that you showed a little bit of where I broke down how Kyle sat there and just lied to his audience for a half an hour straight, now these guys are just greedy. Like, look, yeah. look, how, look, yeah. look, look how much money you're making. You're making more money than you, I'm sure you ever dreamed you were going to make doing this. You making enough money to be honest. Why don't you just play it straight? Right. What you won the lottery. You got in on this 
early before YouTube started messing with algorithms, making yeah. it hard for political shows to break out while people were really invested in this new left movement and they were going to YouTube. You you got lucky, man. You got lucky you're making all that money. What if you lost half your subscribers? You're still going to be set. You're still yeah. going to be set. So why can't you play it straight? Why can't you play it honest? Shows like he wouldn't this. even make less money if he lost half of his subscribers because I think only about ten percent of his subs actually watch the show. He's got like a million <laughs> subs and his yeah, view counts are you know fairly low. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. that's true for all these guys. Majority yes. report yeah. they got they got over a million subscribers. You look at their view counts; it's like fifteen thousand. Usually they got head, they got a head start and they already fumbling the ball. <laughs> well, I want to I want to address something you said before about why do they give up the game months before mm. the election saying no don't worry we will bend the knee to joe biden but for right now where was sanders because most of these progressive activists they're not working class people yep. and they need to signal to their class that they're yep. not a threat yep. they don't want to get ostracized from their class so they feel a need to tell their class yeah, I know you don't like Bernie, but don't worry. No, I'm with you. In and the end, I'm going to vote blue no matter who. Don't ostracize me. Don't make me face social or professional consequences. And that's why you can't build anything with these people. Russell, you had, you had, you had these people. The, they were selling, selling out for likes and retweets on Twitter. Like, I don't know if you guys remember this era, the 2020 post Super Tuesday era, where every, every week there would be another leftist who breaks. Who said, yep. oh, I have, yep. I've seen enough. I remember. <laughs> Anyone who's on Twitter in 2020, you guys remember this era. I remember yep. this. Yes. I've seen enough. I know I don't like Joe Biden, but Trump is a danger to our democracy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Joe Biden. And every time they did it, they would get 15,000 like was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. That, well, they did it in 2016, too. 2016, too. 2016 too. Yeah. How, many, how many Bernie people did you see posting their hashtag, I'm with her? Yeah. Right? So, they do it for social clout within the liberal establishment. As you and you, you, put, you put it better than I do when you, they they signaling to their class interests that they are still on board. Now, to my point earlier regarding movement building, I'm gonna get back to the Ryan Grimm point because I'm, I'm, I'll pull the tweet back up because his argument is that we we push the idea of pushing by and left because that is our attempt at building mass politics that puts the Democratic Party left. And I'm like Ryan Grimm. My argument is. I understand that you guys are attempting mass politics, but I told you guys beforehand, your strategy is a dumb one, which will lead the Democratic Party to shift to the right. I tried to explain it to Bosch's audience. I wasn't civil enough, so the point flew over their head. If you vote, if you pledge their support three months out, why would they, why would they, why would they do anything for you? Now, compare that to, to the demographic that Democrats do everything for. White women who, Donald Trump, Won two elections in a row. Do not let don't let people get twisted. Listen, women is again Trump. You're talking about black women, white women voted for him twice. No. So what do what, what do suburban white women say? That what suburban white women say shit like this. We are worried about crime. We are worried about the leftward drift of the Democratic Party. So then Democrats they chased they chased their vote. Yeah, you had they, Joe Biden yeah. on the debate stage, like I, I promise I'm gonna fund the police more than Donald Trump. Yep. Suburban white women, please love me. <laughs> you guys see the difference in strategy? <laughs> the suburban uh, white women who know their class interests also align with Republicans, they hedging their vote. They're like, which one of you guys gonna chase my class interest here? And whenever Democrats uh, whenever they're like, oh my god, the Democrats, their their message on defund police is scaring me. I will not vote for you. And they that why they running as pro cops now because white women as a demographic know how to wedge their power guess who don't know how to do that black people and the left black people give up their vote every election and then they're like oh my god why the black community ain't getting shit <laughs> well but 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 trump but trump did do better with uh people of yeah, color he did. Yes, he he did. Did. i i see it living in harlem when i was going around in 2016 campaigning for bernie the feedback that i got that was uh contrary more often than no i'm voting for hillary i got that from the older black ladies the young black men no i'm voting for trump this was this untold story of this support for trump in that community that nobody wanted to talk about because it didn't fit the narrative and to russell's point you 
Biden did worse among black people than any Democrat did re in the modern era. The only Democrat president who didn't get 90% black vote, surprisingly enough, is Bill Clinton since the 70s. Really? You know that? The, the, really? People that were, the person that was sold as the first black president, he was, he fought, I mean, I, was, I purposely looked this up one day. I never, he had like 84 to 85%. And then huh. you, you had uh, Barack Obama hit like ninety five first Hillary like ninety two like and ninety six. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna fact check myself, but I looked that up a long time ago. He hit like 80, 85, 84 um, percent. Black people voting against Reagan around ninety percent rate. Uh, Barack Obama won, had nine percent. You had uh, Kerry got ninety percent. Al Gore ninety percent. And then uh, Joe Biden was the first person since Bill, until Bill Clinton that got under ninety percent. So there is people, black people, who are falling off in the Democratic Party, but to me that means nothing if they just going back to the Republican Party. Sure, and and that's what that what you see a lot of times, and that's what's kind of depressing to me. Uh, I I am more heartened by the young black activists and black people who are leading the way towards socialist movements, and this is and people who realize by giving our vote ninety percent clip at Democratic Party, they have no reason to give us gains, no no reason to give us stuff. Yeah, was it Lawrence O'Donnell who famously said you got show. You are not willing to vote for these people for them to give you stuff. So that was my obvious message to these people. And I told them beforehand, you are not the shit that, the shit this party left. If you're writing op eds, but why we got why to the left should bite the uh bite the bullet and vote for Joe Biden, making Twitter posts that go viral that get 15,000 likes, give you 1,000 vote blue no matter who resist followers. <laughs> if you and then once again, I cannot stress enough how much I disagree with voting for Biden, but even looking for at their perspective. It doesn't make sense. Hold that boat to your grave and fight, and then give it up if you're scared as shit. What they were doing made no sense to me at all, at all. So well, this is the now, ultimate irony. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. My my back, Ian. I'll, I'll pass. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't mean, mean to cut you off here, uh, because he was demanding yeah, an ahead. answer. Uh, I said after he, I'll read it to you again. Okay, you guys don't remember. He said, "Serious question: What is the purpose of mass politics?" if not to shape the conditions in order to push politicians left, or is there some other trick, um, like some magic trick? So I said, I said the tactic of endorsing and pledging your vote for Biden was an obviously bad approach that will lead to the continued rightward drift of the Democratic Party. That is what I predicted, and the people who advocated otherwise still won't admit they're wrong to this day. In fact, they about to do the same thing again. Well, Mary and William. Same thing again. So after that obvious checkmate, because I don't understand the point of these questions, he just pivots. He says, "So okay, so your plan was to withhold your vote in November 2020. What's next? What's next? As if he don't know. As if he didn't hear our being before. So this is concern <laughs> trolling. Guys, this is concern trolling. Mm -hmm. Ryan Graham has yeah. followed me for two years now. He been on RBN. He knew he know who RBN is. He know exactly what our answer is. This is concern trolling that they constantly do when people criticize the, the strategy of going within the Democratic Party. Oh, we shouldn't vote for D Joe Biden. What's your answer then? And let me say something. I have an answer, as you guys see. But I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the bar. If you don't have an answer to that question, that does not delegitimize your your obvious complaints of running within the Democratic right. Party. <laughs> exactly. If you yeah. don't know, because that's a very legitimate yep. answer. What yep. should we do then if voting for Joe Biden is not worth it? For, I don't know shit. Right. That's a legitimate right. answer. Yeah, that's like saying you, a, a person can identify that this capitalist system is terrible, but yeah. then you say, what should we do? They can say, I don't know. That doesn't delegitimize the fact that right. capitalism and, and this that system is terrible. Think. They say that yeah. all the time to me, guys. Well, that's all because time, how many times you guys got that response. Well, because if, that's... if your assessment is right, then what, your, what? What do you think we should do then? What? What? what you? They always say this, but Ken, go ahead. I know you want to chime in. Well, no, but that because they need their need. They need to push the idea that there is a plan out there that will get us to a better yeah. world. And what if there isn't? Like you said, I mean, you you took the words right out of my mouth. What if we have no plan? If we have no plan, that doesn't make your plan any better. That's like saying we're going to build a ladder into heaven. And you say, well, you can't get to heaven that way. So, all right, well, then what's your plan to get to heaven? Like, right. you know what I mean? It doesn't, even <laughs> right. if you don't have one, that doesn't mean no. you can build a ladder up there, right? Like, it, it's it's not a legitimate what? comeback. But this well, goes back to, like, their audience cannot process that there might not be a plan. Their audience cannot handle emotionally the very possibility <laughs> 
that we might just be going one way the wrong way. Like they 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 can't take that. Well, yeah, the, go ahead, Russell. Russell the, go ahead. there's like when Crystal kind of obliquely referenced you guys right, after yeah. your Marianne interview. Uh, and, and, and they're, they're the adults in the room, uh, right? If you want to build power. Oh, really? Is that what you've done? Is that what you've done? You have yeah. elected a president in res in response to a president that you spent four years calling a racist legitimately. Mm -hmm. Um who has done more damage to the black community, arguably, than any other living politician. That is who you put up as your president. So this is the power that you're building. This is the adult thing that we end up with when we follow this logic. Is this building power? What power exactly are we building? They never get to that part. They never get to that part. This is the adult yeah. move. What's the result? Yeah, well said. And there's so many layers to this question. And this is why I lay, I'm like, why are we having this conversation on Twitter? You got a YouTube page. I got a YouTube page. Why are, you, why are we wasting time here? Because this is a long, this question is so ridiculous. There's so many layers of this question of why it's ridiculous. As some, a super chat left over earlier, withholding your vote is a legitimate strategy and tactic as well. And even if I don't have a legitimate response to what's next that does not mean you guys are wrong by supporting and voting a party led by jim crow joe these that'd be like this let, let me give an analogy let's say you're stranded in the woods and um you go uh here, you know uh here's some poison ivy we can eat like <laughs> yeah. you go you go i, I don't want no poison ivy and they go, well, you're well playing. you got something else to eat? Like, that doesn't right, make right. poison ivy. Right. Oh, okay. that's exactly. Like, exactly. it is such a, but it's, it's a, it, it is a, it's something that does work on people who don't sit there and really analyze it. They'll go, wow, I don't have an answer, but he has an answer. Well, I guess I'll just eat this poison ivy. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, it is a, it is a, it's something we have to instill in people that, hey, this not having an answer to a falling and failing collapsing system doesn't mean to stay with the collapsing system. That doesn't mean that. So to, to whoever wants to, uh, so I, I, well, feel free to chime in anytime, guys. This is a fun conversation. And, 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 and a lot, well, in a lot of respects, our problem is that we do not have a working class movement and th this isn't actually a new problem you can go back and find the 60s radicals and organizers also complaining about that that was always a problem for radical movements or in modern times it's been a problem for radical movements in the united states that they don't have a working class because for these people, they're playing politics. They're cosplaying politics. It doesn't really affect them. It doesn't really matter for them. It's Lululemon for them. It's a it's a lifestyle brand. It's a pose. There are no consequences for winning and losing. It's just about their self-image, which is also part of why you can never persuade them of anything, because to to change their mind would be to question their own identities. They're they're playing out a psychodrama. They're not really invested in politics because they don't personally have material conditions that politics can solve, as as Keaton often says. This is why at RBN we've been saying like we have to stop listening to uh, the professional managerial class. Oh, they're not concerned about poverty. They're not concerned about police brutality. This is why Sam Cedar will go, I don't care how much the state is getting money. They, they don't care because none of those things affect them. I'll, go, I'll pass it to you, Nick. It looks like you want to chime in. Yeah. Up. The prime criticism that we have is that when we spend $300, $400 million on the Bernie campaign over five years, and that only amounts to hiring a bunch mm -hmm. of PR agents for the Democratic Party, my question is, especially as someone who was complicit in that in some way, as someone who was part of the Bernie Sanders campaign, yeah. I look at that, I'm like, dude, imagine what we could have did with the money I spent on plane tickets, the money we spent on lodge, uh, lodging for uh, traveling with Bernie campaign. Imagine these resources were spent on food banks, strike actions, taking care of people, rent, feeding people for, uh, like, there's so many things we could have done. And this is something I learned by trial by error. I fucked up, guys. I learned mm. from that.
And I and I brought this up just to quickly insert this since we're kind of talking about it. Um, and this is one thing that they're laying their hat on right now. They kind of move from thing to thing. Before it was like, oh, y'all won't even cover her. And look what, what uh, Ka uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre said. Now, then they went from that island to this island of, she got 10%, she doubled her, but without talking about <laughs> the poll, without going into the poll, and you mentioned Peter Dow er, uh, earlier, and here's his tweet. He says, Democrats want someone other than Biden. Marianne Williamson at 10% in any poll this early is very telling. Now, he still, maybe it's subconsciously or not, he's still able to craft a sentence that tells you nothing, but it's a lot of words. Like very telling mm -hmm. is really not telling you anything about mm -hmm. what he thinks about it, but that's a, a beyond the point. Now let's look at the poll, 10%, 63%. Now just based off of that, that's a 63% lead I would not be jumping. But what I did is I clicked on it because you can click on this poll mm -hmm. and do mm -hmm. a deep dive on what actually is this poll about. So let's go to my tweet where I actually look at the poll and let's break it down. The poll's at 10%, but the 10% is made up of 7% who would say probably. So all they did was add probably together with people who said definitely Marianne Williamson. And they said, oh, together 10%. And they just running with it. 10%, she, she, no, she did not double her support. The other thing that they skip over, and I don't even know if they understand this mathematically, the margin of error is larger than the people who say definitely Marianne Williamson. The margin of error is 3.8. The people who say Marianne Williamson is 3%. Now you see how that poll mm -hmm. that they're trying to, look, 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 look at this poll. And like she got, she did a tweet and retweeted this, quote tweeted this. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. something like a bunch, a, a lot of people, four or five thousand people, who liked it, and it's obviously a joke. Now, and then there's another person on there. I know all of us know her. Her name is Bernie Identity. I couldn't find her tweet, but she oh, they love to block. do this. Heavy block. Yeah, <laughs> they love to do this. They go, Bernie Sanders was at ten percent. Bernie Sanders had ten percent with several other people in the race. That's what you keep not included in that, which makes a difference. If there's five people in a race and somebody pulls 10% with five people in a race, that is pretty decent. If there's two people in the race and you're pulling 10%, that is not equivalent. And also, how are you going to make a Bernie movement when even Bernie's not on board? Exactly. Like, this right. is the the Bernie movement, cover, all the like, progressive politicians Progressives are, are not even down. Nina Turner, AOC, <laughs> they, Bernie Sanders are not even down. And uh, I'll pass to you, Nick, or whoever wanted to chime in. They're on the poll, on Marianne Williamson's polling. Um, had you been hearing about this, guys? Had you been hearing? Yeah, no, I heard it. Yeah, Vanguard, I heard it. No, yeah, Vanguard 10%. Covered I know. It. Everybody, she's I know, I know, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> we, we we all got owns when when Marianne cracked yeah. double digits in a poll, right? That's uh, it. Uh, we, all, we all got served on that day. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm eating crow. I'm eating crow. <laughs> exactly. I'm pulling the, on those clown shoes now. The other thing um, that it's important to note here is that Joe Biden has not declared yet. Once Joe Biden declares, that's it. The party coalesces behind Joe Biden. A lot of these people who are entertaining other options are doing so in the hopes that they can sort of convince Joe Biden not to run. Once he's the candidate, he's the candidate. He's the incumbent president. This is how it always works. These are Democratic voters we're talking about. First of all, Democrats don't even they don't vote for who they want to vote for. They vote for who their media tells them they have to vote for. I mean, on the issues, they were very much against Biden in all the polls. It doesn't yep. matter. It yep. doesn't matter. These people are that, that's it. like dogs to vote for how the party bosses and the party media apparatus tells them to. So this is just I just don't understand. This is why I, I know, CJ, you 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 played the clip of me very <laughs> exasperated to say, Mary Ann Williams is a fucking Yeah, that's boy. my favorite yeah. part. <laughs> the, the, just the pain oh, in my expression. That's my favorite part. <laughs> because, I, because I don't oh, understand how you could be hilarious. up for this a third oh. time. How could you be up for this a third time? Who wants oh, to do this a later. third time? It's it's amazing to me. Well, no, nobody does, and that's why she's polling at that level once once you break it down and what little probably they're getting 
you know, these are a few people who Democrats in general is different than it was with Hillary. You you had your hill bots, you had your real and still do your real Hillary cultists. The only people I've ever met who actually like Joe Biden are like 70. Like, I, I don't know a lot of Democrats who don't feel like they have to qualify their support of Joe Biden with I don't like him. So so he doesn't. That's the only reason you're even getting that. But in the end, you cannot build a political project inside of a party where MSNBC has a veto on your choices. That is what we saw once and for all Super Tuesday when Barack Obama made a few phone calls and destroyed months of work. All these poor bastards going out and marching in the snow in New Hampshire. By the time you got to 2020, I had wised up. I was giving a monthly donation just on general principles, but I didn't phone bank. I didn't knock on doors. I didn't do any of what I did in 2016, because at that point I knew they will not let this man be the president, no matter what. It doesn't matter what they have to do. So just to support the dream of it, I'll make a monthly donation to the yeah. effort, but that that's all I'm doing. But if anyone had any doubts about that, the Monday night massacre, as I call it, should have cleared that up. Yeah. Yes. Well, listen, you got to vote for Joe. You got to vote for Joe. You got to throw your support behind Joe. That's yeah. it. But it. Months of work. Exactly. Months of work that's, just that's, went down the drain with a few phone calls. That, that was the point I was about to make regarding the polling story, uh, CJ. Um, and that's why it's hilariously sad that Marianne Williamson people are looking at this, this national poll and using this as hopium. Guys, I have a question for you guys. What state is first? Yeah, right, exactly. South yeah. Carolina. Right. So what the hell does this national poll mean? Nothing. So right. what, if you are someone who's challenging an incumbent president in, in a campaign that is largely mocked by the establishment, a campaign that is considered largely illegitimate by the establishment, what do you need to do immediately in that election to make it so you have a chance? You need to make your campaign immediately legitimate. And by and you can make you can challenge a president to come in. The theory is if you pick off the first few states, you can then say, Oh, I'm the starring candidate, thus run me. That's like the only way to, to defeat an incumbent. Is it likely? No, but that's the theory. If you can pick off the first few states, if you're super popular, fam, South Carolina is gonna hit. Marion Williams is gonna lose by 80 points. <laughs> then the media be like, <laughs> Look at me. She lost by 80 points. Uh, no, it and then no momentum. Bernie right. Sanders lost with momentum. He won right. the first three states in dominant fact. Well, yep. Iowa was uh, bullshit, right? But yes. Nevada was dominant. He came off a dominant Nevada victory. And then yep. they pulled South Carolina and he lost. So Marion Wilson, after getting destroyed in South Carolina, is somehow going to turn it around. <laughs> Well, this is why it all comes back. It all comes back to the cowbell people. I saw some people in the chat earlier call them the cowbell left. I think that's a yeah. great. <laughs> that's a good name. I hope that is. I like that. I like that. <laughs> the cowbell left. <laughs> because the thing is, when a party is dominated by people like that who trust the mainstream media at levels that are just way out of sync with the general population, like the mainstream media has a thirty percent trust rating amongst the general public, but a 70% trust rating within the Democratic Party yep. primary voters. What that tells you is you can't actually build grassroots momentum. The only way to build momentum is to get the media on your side, which Marion Williamson is never going to be able to do. Never. I mean, they have it. There was one political article that came out about her, you know, throwing cell phones at people and slamming doors on her hand and all this shit. That was one article. She gets anywhere near considerability i'm not even yeah. talking about anywhere near <laughs> joe biden i'm just talking about she gets anywhere close to the point where it makes people go wait a minute let's turn a second eye forget it man the onslaught against her is going to be so ruthless and and that she won't last her. a minute because she doesn't have the kind of grassroots support that you would need to weather that bernie you know did phenomenally well considering all that media opposition because he actually had a movement behind him Marianne has a few YouTube personalities. I mean, that's it. That's all it is. It's nothing. It's nothing. And well, Bernie, she's not even on legitimately TikTok. behind her. They're just trying to get subs yeah. and money off that's of it. True. 
true that. I know, look, even if late. we even if we go totally crazy here, right? Even if we just go totally nuts, just completely delusional, even if we debase ourselves to suggest she wins the nomination. In what world are you living in that Marianne Williamson is going to beat Donald Trump in a general election or Ron DeSantis in a general election? Like, what country do you think you live in? What are you, insane? <laughs> well, she said it on the majority report, or Kristen and Kyle, they asked her, do you think you can beat Bi uh, Biden? Yes. Do you think you can beat Trump? Yes. Do you think you can beat yeah. DeSantis? Yes. With a straight face. 